All right, let's go ahead and talk today about the laws of logarithms or laws of logs. And <clears throat> the first the first three little points here are really just things you have to memorize. And I'll just point out a couple of little pieces to you. First is that on the left-hand side here, you'll notice that we have a single log, but on the right-hand side of both of these equal signs, there are two log or two words log. The second thing I want to point out to you is that when you have a multiplication with a single log, it turns into an addition between two logs. And the opposite is true with division, right? If you see a division with a single log, it turns into a subtraction between two logs. The one that's kind of funky is this exponents rule. And when you have an exponent on the inside of a log, it becomes a coefficient on the outside of the log. So what we're going to work with first is a, we call it expand or condense the following using the laws of logs. So I kind of gave you a little hint here. When you're looking at a problem so you know whether to expand it or make it bigger, you're going to see in that problem a multiplication, a division, or an exponent, or a combination of any of those. You're going to know you need to condense it or, or create a single log if you see an addition, a subtraction, or a coefficient. So let's look at this first problem. It says log base 3 of x times y. So I see a single log with multiplication in it. So I have to make a double log with an addition sign. So we take the log base 3 of x, and it's x times y, so plus log base 3 of y. So we took that multiplication and we changed it into an addition. In this second example, we see that we have an exponent inside a single log. So we have an exponent, so we need to make that exponent become a coefficient. So the 4 moves in front, and we write log base 5 of z. Now in this third one, and the reason I didn't write it all the way out, is that you should be able to see that you have a lot going on here. We actually have all three of these things. Up in the numerator, we have exponents and multiplication. And then because there's a denominator, we know we have a division. So if it's helpful, you can kind of put parentheses in. And we know that anything in the numerator is going to be part of a sum. And anything in the denominator is going to be subtracted. So you can really treat it just like that. Let me make my pen a little thinner here. So we'll keep that same log base 2. Of x squared plus log base 2 of y to the third minus, and then anything that would be in the denominator would be subtracted. So this is just a z, so we only have one thing to subtract. So log base 2 of z is subtracted. Now if this were az, we would subtract log base 2 of a, and we would also subtract log base 2 of z. That's why we can kind of use those parentheses to help us see what we need to subtract. Now we actually have an extra step because remember we said we had not just multiplication, but we also had exponents. And I took it in two steps to make sure we saw everything. So those exponents now need to become coefficients because we're expanding, making things bigger or more complicated. Log base 2 of x plus 3 times log, oops, I missed my L. Log base 2 of y and then there was no exponent on that z, so it just stays minus log base 2 of z. So now there are three down below where we have to go in the opposite order, where we have to condense. <coughs> Excuse me. So we see an addition, means that we would keep this log base 5. And we need to change it to a multiplication, so 10 times 4. 
Now again, it's our notes. That's why I took that extra step. In your work, I would expect that you could probably just say, oh, it's a sum, so we need to change it to a multiplication. Log base 5 of 40. So now let's go to the second example. You see a subtraction, so we know that we're going to have a division. You should see a coefficient, so we know we're going to have an exponent. And then we also have the numerator that has an x. So instead of having multiple logs, we'll have a single one. We're condensing, right? We saw a subtraction, so we know to condense. Log base 2. I'm going to draw my fraction bar. In the numerator, I have an x because it's positive. Anything that would be positive or a sum would be in the numerator. Anything that's subtraction or negative would be in the denominator. So we have log base 2 of y in the denominator. And since this 2 is a coefficient, it's going to become an exponent so squared. All right, this third one is, is all on your own. Pause the video, give it a try. Come back and check your work. Make sure you really understand how to condense because this is what we're going to do most often. So then we scroll down a little bit after that, and now we're going to work with why do we why do we learn those laws? It's so that when we're solving problems, that we can we have some ways to, to use them. So we have some recall steps here, and I'm not going to read those to you, um, but I want to do want to point out some of these basic steps. It says if we're in log form, we want to make sure that we condense logs using the laws. So if you see the word log. Right? The moment you see it, so look down at problem A. The moment you see the word log, then you say, okay, I can only have one on the left and at most one on the right. So I need to use those laws to make it so that I have log of something equal to log of something. Sometimes you won't have a log on the left and a log on the right. So sometimes it'll be like problem B, where you can get one log on the left and have it equal to a number. That's okay as well. So the first thing you want to do is condense it down so that you can either make log with base equal to log with base or log equal to a number. So let's do that step first and then we'll come back and look at it again. So in this first one, it's a subtraction. So that means that my first thought is that I'm going to have log base 12. 72, the coefficient is positive, so it's in the numerator. The minus log of 9, so that 9 goes in the denominator. And on the right hand side I do have a single log, there's no condensing there, so it just tags along. Log base 12 of 4x. Now we can simplify this. 72 over 9 is an 8, that's why we condensed it. So log base 12 of 8 equals log base 12 of 4x. <coughs> now the moment you get here, when you have a log equal to a log, we can go back to just like we were doing the other night where you say, oh, well, if these two things, these two bases are the same, then these two answers are also the same. So we can kind of ignore or cancel or eliminate the log word and just say that x is, sorry, 8 is equal to 4x, which makes x equal to 2. We always go back and double check, make sure that when I plug in this 2, I don't cause myself to be taking the log of a negative number. 4 times 2 is 8, so it's not, so this does work. It don't, it don't cause any errors there. Let's look at it. one last example, one where we don't get log equal to a log, one where we have to go back and rewrite in exponential form. So let's start off with we have to condense. 
So this needs to say log base 3 of x times x minus 6 is equal to 3. So I took this addition and I changed it into a multiplication. I'm going to take one more step and clean that up because that's a distributive property when I do that multiplication. So we'll say log base 3 of x squared minus 6x is equal to 3. Here, we don't have log base 3 on the left and another log base 3 on the right. So since we don't have that, we have to go back to exponential form, or we have to use that loop, right, that log loop. So we would say base to exponent equals your answer, right? There's my equal sign on this one. 3 is the base. This 3 over here is an exponent equals x squared minus 6x. So 27 equals x squared minus 6x. In our last set of notes, we saw that we could solve by square roots. This time we can't solve by square roots because we don't have just a squared and a constant. We also have an x term. Hey, baby. Hi, Mommy. How are you? Good. Sorry about that interruption, but aren't they cute? So then we had to go ahead and finish this problem. We can't solve it by square roots. We have to solve it by factoring. So we'll set it equal to 0. It means that we subtracted 27 from both sides. And now we're looking for the pair of numbers that multiply to 27, actually a negative 27, but add to negative 6. So negative 9 and positive 3. means that we potentially have two problems, or two answers here. We could have x equal to 9, we could have x equals negative 3. And we just have to double check that neither of these answers causes us to be taking a logarithm of a negative value. So I plug in 9, log base 3 of 9, that's a positive. 9 minus 6, that's 3. So, this, so 9 definitely works. No problems there. But let's check negative 3. The moment we plug it into this first one, log base 3 of x, log base 3 of negative 3, we're not allowed to do that so that this x equal to negative 3 isn't going to work. So we only have one solution to this last problem. Have a good day. See you in the next set.